The power grid. It's tough to make it look exciting. Hollywood has tried. You're too late, Spider-Man. I designed this power grid. There's even an anime called Gridman. But for most folks, electricity is something we just take for granted. Until, of course, it's gone. With millions of Texans struggling to keep warm, several power generators failed, crippling the system. The climate crisis is forcing a global reckoning with energy. How it gets made, where it's built, who gets access, and who profits. At the center of everything is the grid. It's the computers and transmission and power plants that could, if we get it right, support a more sustainable, resilient way of living. Right now, though, the grid is condemning us to a future that nobody wants. The grid isn't one thing. It's a thicket of systems, institutions, and people. Some who want to help, and some who very much don't. First up is the utility. These are the people you pay in your electric bill. And in general, they're in the business of selling electricity. Because utilities can vary in ownership, size, and scope, they often have wildly different perspectives on how best to operate. To manage those differences, there are seven regional transmission organizations, or RTOs, spread across much of the country. They run the grid, design the rules, and plan for the future, at least in theory. Crucially, they're accountable to their member utilities, who join voluntarily. In fact, RTOs don't have authority beyond the power that their member utilities grant them. Think about that. The folks who decide the rules of the game are primarily accountable to the other players, the utilities, and not to those affected by the game, like you. So, for example, you could try and build a wind farm in North Dakota, but if MISO's member utilities put up a fight, you might be out of luck. MISO, the RTO in the middle of the country, is particularly important. The Midwest is a hot spot for clean energy, with tens of millions of people and growing. We need them planning, modernizing, building new wind and solar, and taking it where the demand is. But if we zoom out, the people asked to plan for the future can't actually do so without meeting the current demands of the utilities. And too many of those utilities are locked into fossil fuels. And everyday people, we're stuck paying high electric bills and wondering when the next heat wave will hit. Now, there is an agency with authority and influence over RTOs. It's called FERC, or as Congressman Sean Kasten calls it, the F to the E to the R to the C. That's right, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is the big fish. It consists of political appointees and technical staff who, on paper, make sure the RTOs are cooperative, fair, and that the rates charged for access to the grid are just and reasonable. In practice, progress with FERC is, like all things in Washington, painfully slow. There are also state governments, which can mandate clean energy. And there are utilities, industries, and cities that are helping drive an enormous demand for it. But without a modern grid to support that demand, it ain't happening. So what can be done? There are the usual answers to vote and support renewable energy. And that is important. But the urgency of the climate crisis demands more. We need leadership from the RTOs. And they need to hear from you. That's why we're campaigning to build a better, more inclusive grid. So get involved. Go to cleanupthegrid.org for more. <laughs>